show time. <laughs> All right. Good morning again, guys. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? How are my teachers doing? Very good, good thank you. Good, good, good. You're yeah, doing good. Well, thank goodness because um, you are going to answer a lot of questions submitted by children. And you know how we all know how children um, ask really funny questions. Uh, mm -hmm. They're so unpredictable. They ask questions that we have never thought about. But when you think about it, you go, yeah, oh, how come I never thought about it? So uh, are you ready? Did you read a lot of turtle books last night? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So we have uh, teachers um, who are so gung-ho now, like uh, so excited to answer questions. But let me introduce to you my co-moderator today. Her name is Kayleen. She is nine and a half years old. That's like 40 hi. years younger than I am. <laughs> Hello, Kayleen. <laughs> Say hi. 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 Well, thank, hi, thank you for agreeing hi. to uh, co-moderate with me today. Thank you for helping me tackle some of these questions. And then we have a couple of teachers uh, who are so gracious to, to take on this task. First, we have teacher Livia. Teacher Livia is a total scientist, so she has a lot of knowledge about total science. Well, everybody here, all my teachers are very knowledgeable. And we have teacher Rushan. Teacher Rushan is uh, calling in from Singapore. So we have an international teacher as well. And then we have teacher Selling. Teacher Selling is also a sea turtle scientist and uh, she does a lot of uh, diving, you know, going down into the ocean to sea turtles, to identify them. Do they look the same? Are they the same? Oh, and she assigns names to her sea turtles. So how cool is that, right? So if you want to uh, symbolically adopt a turtle, so maybe we can discuss with Teacher Selling after this. Um, we also have uh, Teacher Alia. Let me see if Teacher Alia is here. Hi, I don't know something uh -huh. the camera. <laughs> All right, well, something is wrong with the camera, but that's okay because uh, good thing is she's here to answer our questions. And uh, Teacher Alia is an expert with freshwater turtles. She can tackle all your questions about uh, freshwater turtles, uh, how many eggs do they lay, uh, where do they live, what do they eat. Okay, so she'll take all your freshwater turtle questions. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, did I say what my name is? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've been going on, you know, all right. Um, so my name is Pelf. Um, uh, I'm one of uh, the turtle people like these teachers here. Uh, they are all my good friends. I've invited them because I don't know all the questions to you, all, all the answers to your questions. So uh, I need help. So I got my friends to help me. So if you are ready, let's go ahead and tackle the questions. I will start with the first question and then Kayleen will go to the second question. Hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready yeah. All, all right, ready. good. Okay, so we have our first question. What are the differences between a tortoise and a sea turtle? And uh, Amar, Amar asked this question. It's a great question, Amar. Good job. And uh, who do we want to answer this question? Uh, Teacher Rushan? Yes, I can answer this question. And actually, um, we were asked this question at the Olive Ridley Project quite a number of times, and we actually made a video of it. So I think I'm going to try and share this video with you and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Okay. Can you see the video yet? Yes. There we are. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I think uh, everyone is not able to hear the sound that we're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. But I'll just cut. I'll just cut the video there. Uh, sorry about that. I thought you would be able to hear the music. It's nice music, but anyway, it's fine. So sea turtles, their feet are actually flippers, and they're flat like that so that it helps them move through the water when they uh, move them up and down. 
tortoises actually have feet that are kind of stubby because they stay on land all the time. So if you think of elephants, they have stubby little feet and that's how they move around on land. Terrapins, this wasn't asked about terrapins, but terrapins are a third type of turtle and they have the webbed feet, but they also have claws because this, they spend the uh, same amount of time in the water as they do on land. So this is how you can tell the difference between a sea turtle and a tortoise and in addition, a terrapin. All right. Well, thank you, teacher Rushan. No worries. Kayleen, do you want to ask the second question? Okay. Our next question is from Noor Anil Safiatu. Her question is, how many subspecies of river terrapians are there in Malaysia? Teacher Alia, would you like to answer this? Yes, please. All right. So in Malaysia, we have um, two, actually, um, two subspecies of river terrapins. Um, one is the Batagu Afinis Afinis that are found in the Perak River. And the other one is Batagur Afinis Edward Molly that is found in the Terengganu River. So the only dif the major differences between these two subspecies is the Edward Mollies have a more longer longer head and uh, with an higher upturned snout. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you, you get your answer, yeah? Uh, Nur Ainil Safiatu. So there are two subspecies of uh, river terrapins in Malaysia. All right. Uh, this is going to be like a dual language thing <laughs> uh, session. Our next question um, was asked in Chinese. So I'm going to read it in Chinese and uh, teacher Livia can answer this, okay? The question is, uh, well, in English, it says, do all turtle, do all turtle lake eggs look the same? And this question came from Yi Tang. Uh,这个问题就是，嗯，以唐想要问老师，呃，全部乌龟蛋、海龟蛋和龟蛋都一样的吗？ Hi, Yi Tang. Um, 谢谢你的问题。那我就会用华语来跟你讲这个问题啦。呃，首先呢，其实每个蛋都不一样的，它不一样，怎样不一样嘞？就是它的形状。跟他的可能他一点点少少不一样的颜色可是我想要给你一个例子那我就有一个照片呃 Rushan, can you play the photo? OK OK, 你可以看这边哦这个照片哦它左边是那个 letter back turtle egg 就是我们的灵皮龟的蛋 然后右边呢是 green turtle egg 也就是我们的绿蜥龟蛋然后你可以很明显的看得出它那个大小的不一样 letter back 是比较大的 然后 green turtle 会比较小 OK 这个是海龟蛋啊河龟蛋嘞这个我就很想问一下呃呃 uh, uh, even though you are uh, going to explain in English, but I can help you to translate. Okay. Can you tell us uh, river terrapins eggs, how, how different they are? They are bigger and more oblong in shape. Ah, okay, Yitang. Uh, teacher Alia said, if it's a hai gui dan, it's a bit yuan, it's like a bing bang chu, it's yuan. But if it's a he gui dan, it's a bit yuan, it's a bit yuan. Okay, so I hope I can answer your question. All right, to briefly translate uh, what teacher Livia just mentioned, uh, the eggs, turtle eggs do not look the same. They could be uh, different in terms of size and color. And what you see on the screen right now, on the left is the ladder back turtle egg. It is rounder and bigger. Green turtle eggs on the right, uh, they are smaller. And uh, freshwater turtle eggs, like teacher Alia mentioned just now, they are oblong in shape, they are longer. All right, so, so let's move on to, okay, we'll stop sharing the screen. Let's move on to the next question. Kaylin? This question is from Zara Dari. They ask, where do, where do turtle lay their eggs? Teacher, teacher Rusha, would you like to answer this? Oh, I'd love to answer this. 
turtles, uh, un turtles, tortoises, and terrapins all lay their eggs in the ground. So sea turtles, uh, they never come up onto the land, other uh, except for the mummy turtles. The mummy turtles will come onto the beach, they will dig a hole into the ground, and then they will lay their eggs in the ground. Terrapins also do the same thing. So they will shift between, at least in Australia, they will shift between two water bodies. So when they want to lay their eggs, they'll move from one pond and migrate to another pond, and then they'll dig a hole in the ground and lay their eggs there as well. Tortoises do the same as well. They'll also dig a hole in the ground and lay their eggs in there. And then after that, they will leave the eggs um, and migrate back to where they came from. And then the eggs will hatch and the babies will come out of the ground and they'll move on from there. All right. So Zara and Zarin, so you got your answers. Uh, we'll move on to, are we going too fast? No? Are we doing okay? All right. So let's move on to question number five. Uh, Ashton and Alexis, yep, they asked this question. How many turtles are there in the ocean? In the ocean. So this is a tough one. Um, I have no idea how many turtles there are in the ocean. But uh, well, because the, the, uh, teacher Livia works with sea turtles, let's ask teacher Livia. Okay. Uh, Ashton and Alexis, uh, thank you for the question because... Uh, is a really hard one because I really do not have the exact feet, exact number of the turtles in the ocean. But I'm going to give you, uh, uh, let you have a look, uh, uh, watch a video. Uh, maybe you will have some kind of idea of how many turtles we have in the ocean. Uh, is it a little bit like? Yeah, it looks like it's not moving. Eh? Okay, it is. Okay. All right. So uh, it's okay if the video is a little bit slow. Uh, I can post the YouTube link in the chat box later. So I just briefly wanted to tell you that this footage is actually taken in uh, Costa Rica uh, ocean. Uh, uh, the ocean has a lot of turtles. And at the same time, it's like, more than a thousand of, of over thousands of turtles at the same time at the same ocean so this is actually a phenomenon of aribada so it's called night arrival uh these uh turtles they're actually olive ridley so they will uh when it's arrived their nesting season all of them together so you see so many of them in the ocean they will actually go back to the beach where they're born together land on the beach together and lay it together <laughs> so it's a very very massive phenomenon which i uh, i haven't seen in my life before and yeah this is aribada and uh, i also wanted to point out another thing is uh sea turtles that actually lay a lot of eggs in one nest so for example uh uh, green turtle they lay about 80 to 120 eggs for one nest and they will lay uh, a few times in a year so all these things, uh they of course they will not hatch to get uh like all of them hatch maybe some will uh you know get eaten by the uh the the monitor, monitor laser or baby laser. shark sorry okay okay uh so yeah so all these mother turtles they lay a lot of eggs so it makes up a lot of baby turtles in the ocean so we actually do not know how many of them in the ocean <laughs> right thank you teacher Livia. so that was uh yeah it is uh it's really nice feeling to see that we have these many turtles in the ocean because uh, we don't always see them so when you see a, a helicopter view like that it's uh well at least we feel that they are still there in the sea in the ocean all right, uh, well, let's move on to the next question. Kaylin. This is from Mihao Shazwan. Shazwan. He asks, do leatherback and, do leatherback and green turtle eggs have the same shape or size? Sterling, would you like to answer this? Teacher Sterling, sorry. <laughs> Teacher Selling, would you like to answer this question? 
Yes. Hello. Can you yeah. hear? All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nidal, for the question. And teacher Livia just showed a slide of the leatherback and green turtle eggs. Uh, Lucian, can you show the slide again, please? So basically, uh, they are all the same size, about a ping pong ball like this. And leatherback um, eggs are a bit bigger, slightly bigger than green turtle. But sometimes they also have abnormal eggs that is really tiny because they put yolk inside the egg. And not all the eggs are always round, but this looks pretty much it, like a ping pong ball. And leatherback a bit bigger. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you, teacher Sally. Yeah, so you know, our, our kids who ask this question, they get to listen to it twice. So it's like a refresher course. You know, the first time you missed it, doesn't matter because another kid, another child is going to ask the same question and you're going to address that same question. So moving on, we have this uh, question from Leon and Zane. Uh, they want to know, so how do you tell which turtles are male and which turtles are female? This one is tricky. I, I uh, no, I yeah, I think teacher Roshan is very experienced uh, in this. Because... So. Well, because simply because I have an example right here. So say hello to Myrtle the turtle. So uh, we know Myrtle the turtle is a female turtle, is a is a lady turtle. Hi, Livia. <laughs> you can tell because her tail is very short. So turtles that have a very short tail tend to be female. But if they have a very long and big tail, like something that goes out to about here, then we know that they are male. So if you're out swimming in the ocean and you see a turtle and your first instinct when you see its tail is, oh my God, that is a huge tail. That's a male. If it's a very small tail, then it's probably either a female or a very young um, adult uh, sea turtle because all sea turtles, when they're sub adults, when they're young adults, when they're teenagers, they all have a very short tail. So once they get to breeding age, that's when you can tell the difference between male and female t turtles. Is that okay? That's perfect. Uh, well, I can understand it. Kaylin, do you understand this this answer? Yeah. Y yes, you do. Yeah, because I just want to make sure kids can understand uh, teacher Lushan. All right. So yeah, question number eight now. Question number eight is asked by Tan Jia Ho. He asks, how heavy is a turtle? Teacher Selling, would you like to answer this question? Yeah, sure. So uh, there are many types of turtles with different sizes. And the largest turtle is actually the leatherback turtle. And it can grow up to 600 uh, kilograms. And if you imagine a kanchil, a car, a leatherback would be about the length of the car. So it's about two meters in size. So it's really heavy and they take a long time to crawl up the beach to lay eggs. Right. Oh, so I want to add to this because uh, well, the question, I know the question is how heavy is a turtle? So uh, the sea turtles are big and heavy, right? But we also have smaller turtles, remember? Yes. So we have freshwater turtles, the one that I work with, uh, they are not that heavy. Uh, the heaviest that I have met weight was 36 kilograms. I think that would be the equivalent to uh, a, I don't know, a 12, 14 year old child, 36 kilograms. Yeah. And we have all seen um, turtles that are trying to cross the road. You know, when you're on your drive, you know, balik kampung with your parents and your father say, oh, look, there's a turtle trying to cross the road. Okay, so then those are box turtles. And because box turtles are smaller, they weigh, uh, they're lighter, right? So, so box turtles could weigh up to, I don't know, one to two kilograms. So that's uh, very light compared to a sea turtle. <laughs> right, so we hope this uh, answers um, Jia Hao's question about uh, how, how heavy is a turtle. Uh, moving on. Oh, this is interesting. So we have question number nine coming from Naim Osama. Naim wants to know how does a turtle sleep? Well, do turtles sleep? Yeah, I think well, teacher Selling may be the best person to answer this question. Do turtles sleep? Yeah, uh, thank you Naim for the question. So actually, 
turtles are like humans, they sleep as well. And Arushan, can you share the slide? So um, they also have a place where they will go to and sleep. It's like us, we will go to bed to sleep and they close their eyes when they sleep. And this is a picture of a sea turtle sleeping uh, in the ocean. And usually they will find places where they feel safe so that they uh, they can just sleep in peace. Ah, uh -huh. nice. And how long do they sleep for? Do they also need like eight hours of sleep like we do? It depends though. It depends. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to our next question. Number 10. Um, this question is from Nikhil Ezrad Davin. What is the smallest turtle in the world? Teacher Alia, would you like to answer this? Yes, I would. Thank you. All right, this is a, a good question, Nikhil. So the smallest turtle in the world would be the speckled dwarf tortoise. Let me see if I can try and share the image of this turtle with you. So we have the biggest turtle. Is Leatherback the biggest turtle? All right, the smallest turtle. Yes. Can you see this tortoise? Yes. Uh, right? Okay. So, yeah, it's so cute, right? So, this is the speckled dwarf tortoise, also called um, Cursobius signatus. It is um, found and only found in South Africa. So, Nikhil, I hope you have a ruler with you so that you can actually measure how big uh, the adult males are. So the adult male size is around six to eight centimeters, while the adult females are only eight to ten centimeters, and they weigh around ten uh, uh, and they weigh around hundred to one hundred and sixty-five grams only. And the sad thing about this turtle, uh, this tortoise, is that they are now um, listed as endangered species. So if we 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 don't care for them right now, um, they might lead to extinction. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. It does, it does. Thank you, Teacher Alia. No problem. All right, so we move on to our next question. We are taking your questions. Well, well my teachers are very good at doing their job. Well done. So, question 11. How long can sea turtles dive underwater? Ooh. Right, so who should we call to answer this question? What about teacher selling? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, thank you, Ariana and Harry, for the question. It's a really interesting one. So, sea turtles are actually reptiles, but they are not like fish. They don't breathe underwater. So, they actually have to come up to the surface to breathe, and they will dive down again. And it all depends on how long they can hold their breath, and they can actually hold their breath for several hours underwater, depending on what kind of activity they are doing. So let's say if they're sleeping, they could actually hold their breath up to like seven, eight hours and stay underwater and sleep. Uh, if they are doing like routine uh, activity, swimming, uh, feeding, maybe they can hold their breath up to 45 minutes to one hour. And usually when they feed, uh, that's what we notice. Uh, they tend to surface every 15 minutes to breathe and then they will dive back down and continue feeding. So uh, it all depends, uh, but they can not stay dive, not only, um, they can dive really deep as well. And they can stay underwater for 45 minutes, you will say? Longer. Yeah, 45 it's, it's just, all they, right. can, they can well, stay underwater for hours. Well, we cannot hold our breath for that long, no. but sea turtles can. No. So that, yeah. that is amazing if you ask me. <laughs> yes. It is, it is. All right, okay. So we move on to our next question. Question 12. Our next question is asked, asked by Aiden Yusuf McAfee. How long have turtles existed? Teacher Rushan, would you like to answer this? I would love to answer this. And the reason I would love to answer this is uh, people know me as liking turtles. But what other people don't know is that I really, really <laughs> like, 
dinosaurs. And <laughs> the reason this is very important, it stop, go away. The reason this is very important is because, is because turtles have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. In fact, the dinosaurs only appeared on the earth 250 million years ago. Turtles came around in the scene at 235 million years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, you can say it's fine. So as my friend Bono the Dino here can tell you, they he has probably seen them when they were around. But back then they used they didn't look like turtles. They used they kind of looked like very flat lizards. They hadn't evolved the shell yet. That came much, much, much later. But yes, turtles have been around for that long since the time of the dinosaurs. Say bye, Bono. Okay, go away. Bye bye, Bono. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, that answers uh, Aiden's question. Um, our 13th question. Okay, this one is interesting because you know why? Um, we, we talk about celebrating World Turtle Day on the 23rd of May every year. So on World Turtle Day uh, every year, uh, we have uh, we organize activities, we have uh, releases, you know, where, ceremonies where we release turtles into the river or into the sea. And then we have people around the world uh, celebrating this day. But um, how did this day come around? Like, who was the first person who started it? So Hogan Chong asked this question. Who initiated World Turtle Day and why was it established? Why was it established? And actually, I want to know why are we all celebrating World Turtle Day? And teacher Livia, would you like to take this question? Hmm, we have a connection issue with teacher Livia. All right, but that's okay because uh, teacher Livia will try to come into our meeting room again. So we will come back to this question. Uh, let's take question 14. Our next question is asked by Daniel and David. They ask, why do tortoises, terrapins and sea turtles have shells? Teacher Rushan, would you like to answer this? Yes, actually, I would like to answer this because I have some very handy uh, uh, visuals again, as uh, I tend to usually do. Uh, I've shared my screen again. Sorry, that's the wrong screen. I'm going to share another one. Just give me a moment. Uh, OK, here we go. So Teacher Pelf, if you'd be able to share this visual. So yes. the reason. Turtles uh, have shells, in, partic in particular why tortoises and terrapins have shells, is so that they can retract themselves into their shells and try to stay away from predators. So once they pull themselves into their shells, they're essentially protected from any predators that want to try to bite at them. Now, I'm going to pull out Myrtle the turtle again. The thing about, the thing about a sea turtle like Myrtle Myrtle would not be able to put her head and her fins into her shell. And the reason being is because Myrtle the turtle evolved in the water to be flat, really, really flat. And the reason they want to do that is so that they can reserve as much energy as they can while they're swimming in the water. So when something like a shark comes at them, how do they get away from them? So they got two options. The one, the first one is to try to swim away as fast as possible. But if they can't swim away, they have this ingenious thing that they do. And it's just as simple as turning to the side. So if you imagine this is a shark and this is Myrtle the turtle right here, a shark would be able to bite the turtle like this. If the turtle turns sideways, the shark can't get its mouth around because its mouth can't open so wide. So all the turtle has to do is just keep showing its back to the shark until the shark gets bored and moves away and figures this is too much trouble to try to eat. I'm going to go somewhere else. And then the turtle can go about and doing its own turtley business. Right, Myrtle? Myrtle doesn't have to worry about sharks. She just has to worry about dinosaurs. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, that that's something I learned today. That um, that's what turtles do. Like uh, you know, you know, just show, show, uh, turn around and show your back, your your carapace, your shell, so that the sharks cannot get to you. So that's just brilliant. If you ask me, what, what was that? 
Sorry, it was uh, Bono was being Bono. Okay. okay. Sorry. I'll okay. oh, come on a leash. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we have teacher back on uh, in the classroom with us today. So, uh, well, let, let's ask that question again. So, teacher Livia. Um, Hogan Chong wants to know who initiated World Turtle Day and why it was established. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry that I lost connection just now. It's so, okay. so just actually to be very honest, I didn't know until you asked this question and I go and check uh, Google. I asked Mr. Google, then only I know. So actually the first uh, word of the day that celebrated is actually in 2000, year 2000, 2000. And it was started by a, a couple, a, a wife and a husband. It, uh, they are actually from a non-profit organization it's called uh, Horana, uh, American Party Society. Okay, so uh, the purpose of celebrating World Today Day is to raise awareness among all of us, uh, all people in the world, to protect, to, to know the importance of turtles and tortoise to us. So that is why we celebrate this uh, World Today Day until today, on the 23rd and May, uh, 23rd May. Right. Thank you, DJ Livia. So yeah, you know what I was saying just now earlier at the beginning of this session that uh, we don't know question, all the answers to your questions. So uh, we have to read up. We have to do a bit of research to, to be able to answer your question. So this is one of the examples. Well, thank you, DJ Livia, for taking the initiative to uh, read up and ask Lord Google how to answer uh, Hogan Chong's question. Okay, so we move on to question 15. Question 15 is from Iman. Iman wants to know, oh, can turtles take off their shells? Oh, well, I think this is a result of the um, kids watching too much cartoon. You know how, um, I'm not sure about you, but for me, growing up, when I watch cartoon, the, the turtles in the cartoon, they usually um, come out of their shell and they leave their shell turning round, 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 like turning turtle on the floor like that. So I'm not, I don't think that happens. I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's ask uh, Teacher Roshan. Right, so um, this kind of blew my mind when I became an adult uh, because I used to watch cartoons like that too and I used to think turtles could come out of their shell. But uh, when I went into, and it wasn't something I really thought about until I went to school again, and uh, I saw a photo of a turtle and if Teacher Pelf can show this photo. Yes. And... Uh, what you can see here is, okay, if you, for the kids at home, if you put your hand behind your back, you can feel your spine. I meant the kids, not you, Livia, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the kid, but the, if, if you can feel, you can feel your spine. So that is your backbone. If you look at, if you look at the turtle, the backbone of the turtle is um, fused onto its shell. So if the backbone of the turtle is fused onto the shell, then that means it's not able to take its shell off. So unlike what you see in the cartoons, um, it's not true. Turtles can't take their shells off and put it in the laundry and then hang it and then put it back on like um, like your t-shirt. Uh, it's fused to their body and they have to have it um, all the time. It's part of their evolution. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Teacher Rushan. So I learned something new today that um, turtles cannot come out from their shell. So they grow together with the shell. I guess that's why, you know, when we see um, turtles are, that are being run over by a car, uh, well, they cannot run out of their shell. So they get killed on the road, right? Okay, let's go to question 16. Our next question is asked by Ariana and Harris. They ask, what's the first food baby turtles will have? Teacher okay, Lydia, I want, I want. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Teacher Livia did some research, so she must want to answer this question. <laughs> yes, uh, Teacher Pal. That's because uh, actually this first food, uh, baby turtle is uh, what I have been studying all the time. And uh, this is, you know, have you, you see the photos right now? And you see uh, at the most left, 
okay the most left you will see a baby turtle in a eggshell in an eggshell and this baby turtle have this pinkish thing right uh, under the you know like attached at the body here so this is actually called a uh, yolk you know like uh, when you eat chicken egg you have this yellow and the white part so the yellow part is the yolk so it's actually attached on the baby turtle's tummy stomach here so you look at the second photos so this uh pinkish yolk of the baby turtle is uh it shrink it becomes smaller at the tummy there at the stomach there then uh after about uh when they come out from the sand we will we will get to see the yolk is actually fully absorbed it's become even smaller and flatter at the stomach there so this is their food so uh, the mother turtle, they will never take care of the eggs or the, the the hatchlings or the baby turtles. So once they lay the eggs into the hole that dug by the mother, the mother will go back to the sea, to the ocean. So these baby turtle, they fit on this, they rely on this uh, yolk to absorb nutrients and energy and become strong. So they, later on, when they come out from the nest, they will be able to crawl across the beach and go to the sea and swim away. So this is the first food of a baby turtle. They don't have mother to take care of them, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Right, so you, they don't actually eat anything. So they, they eat yolk and then they get their nutrients from there. So when we eat anything, when we eat something, that's because we want to absorb nutrients from the food. So that's why it's always, always very important to eat nutritious food. This is a public service announcement for all children to eat all the vegetables that your mother serves you. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, the next question is very technical. I don't know. Kids these days ask such tough questions. This next question comes from uh, let me show, uh, Torrance. Torrance wants to know what is the largest number of eggs laid in Malaysia and when? Like largest number of eggs laid in Malaysia. <laughs> Okay, let's um can we get teacher Alia to tackle this question? Okay, first of all, uh Tan Torrance, oh my gosh, where do you get this kind of question? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that the other teachers will come and help me as well. Um okay, so this is what I know. The largest number of eggs laid in Malaysia was in back in 1988 at Rantau Abang Terengganu. Um it's from a leather bag that actually uh, more than 1,200 leather bags came to the beach to lay their eggs and they've laid around 60,000 eggs. So that's really amazing and, and we don't have leather bags here anymore sadly but hopefully one day, I don't know, a miracle could happen, we can see them again and they can you know come back and lay more eggs on our beaches. What about other teachers? What do you think? I well, that reminded me of something because uh, a few years ago when I was taking guests on our uh, turtle trips to uh, a beach in Kemaman, I heard from the rangers that a green sea turtle had just laid 188 eggs. 100, let, 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 let that sink wow. in for a short while. 188 eggs from a female sea turtle. I just thought that was... Wow. <laughs> well, we, we, all, we have all heard about how green turtles lay an average of 100 eggs, right? But this particular green turtle, she laid almost two times the typical number of eggs. So that's, uh, well, that should go into the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> yeah, any other teachers want to add on to this? Yeah, what, what's the stories that you have heard? Uh, it's actually quite true. So on average, uh, it's usually 128 for green turtle. Mm. And yeah, I've also seen about the most in Malaysia. It was 166 eggs. It was really long because yeah, we, we relocate the eggs to the hatchery. So we have to actually wait for her to lay eggs. And it does take quite some time. And you wonder like, oh my God, is she still laying? Like, it's not finishing yet, like it's more than usual because like uh, sometimes we get only 80 eggs or 100 eggs and 166 is a lot. It is, it is. All right. 
Okay, so now we move on to, uh, let me tell you a, a big secret, yeah. So this person will ask our, this next question, uh, well, she's, I'm not, I'm not sure if I should say this, but uh, she's a big kid. All right, uh, Kaylin? This question is asked by ASEAN. ASEAN asks, can we hold turtles in our bare hands when we release them into the sea? Teacher Livia, would you like to answer this question? Yes, uh, I would love to. So, uh, because I have been doing uh, this turtle release event a lot in my lifetime. So, how we do it normally, we will release this baby turtle uh, by putting them into a container. As you see from the picture, that is a transparent plastic container containing this. Uh, we put this baby turtle into the container and what we do, we are going to hold the container and release and, you know, tilt, like, you know, slant it a little bit and then let the turtle go. So the reason of uh, us doing this, putting the baby turtle on the container, not on your hand, that's the reason of, uh, because we wanted to tell, uh, educate people that uh, we don't uh, touch wildlife, any kind of wildlife uh, as we like. Uh, like for example, if you swim, if you snorkel in the water, you see uh, a sea turtle beside you, you shouldn't touch them. Maybe just uh, stay a distance and observe how they swim gracefully in the water. So we wanted to tell people this uh, message. So that's why we use a plastic container. And secondly, also we wanted people to handle it gently, very carefully. You give all the love you have to the baby turtle when you release it. So we put it into a container. So uh, we will avoid any kind of accident because these baby birds sometimes, oh, they can be very active. They can be like, you know, keep moving uh, in the container until they, you know, like fall off. So it will have a very high possibility happen on your hand. So they will like maybe too excited to go to the sea, then they drop off from your palm. So there is also this kind of situation as well. So we, we use a plastic container. Yeah. Right. And the best thing about it is that uh, you reuse your plastic containers, right? You don't use them just one time and throw it away, right? So if you just yeah. buy a plastic container, you can use it again and again and again and again, multiple times. But uh, the, the, the big question behind this is that um, we should not touch them with our hands. Am I right? Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Teacher Olivia. You're okay, welcome. We have, um, the next question comes from Rebecca. Rebecca Rose. Rebecca Rose wants to ask, um, what do sea turtles eat? Ooh, yeah, this one, this is a, a, a good question uh, to ask teacher Rushan because teacher Rushan likes to eat. <laughs> wow, thanks, Pell. <laughs> I mean, Pell's <laughs> not wrong. I, 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 Pel, I mean, uh, teacher Pell is not wrong. Uh, teacher Rushan really likes to eat, especially since Ramadan is over. Okay, uh, to answer this question, I am first going to show you some interesting, uh, some photos on the different types of sea turtles that we have. So I've shared my screen, and if Teacher Pelf would be able to show that to everyone. So we have seven species of sea turtles. We have the leatherback sea turtle, the green sea turtle, the, well, the black sea turtle is really a kind of green sea turtle. Uh, we have the flatback sea turtle, uh, the hawksbill sea turtle, the loggerhead sea turtle, and the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, as well as the olive Ridley sea turtle. What I want to point out is the differences in the shape of their face. So I'm going to go back to, for example, the hawksbill sea turtle. So the hawksbill sea turtle, you can see that its head is very skinny and that its head is very long. And what's more important is that its beak is very, very long as well. And this is to help the hawksbill sea turtle to be able to get into the tiny, tiny crevices of the coral reefs to be able to get its favorite food, which are sponges. So the only way that hawksbill sea turtles are able to reach sponges inside the reefs is to be able is to ensure that their heads are very small so that they can get in and squeeze into the reefs and be able to grab them. Now, when we look at a loggerhead sea turtle, this is a very special turtle. If you are ever out in the wild 
and you happen to see a sea turtle and your first reaction is holy cow that is a huge head it's likely to be a loggerhead sea turtle um i mean there are a lot of other different things you would have to look at before you can say it's a loggerhead sea turtle but that's definitely one of the re one of the things to look at and the reason their head is so big is because they like to eat crustaceans so that's things like crabs and lobsters and clams so they need the big head with all those muscles to be able to break the clams and break the lobsters and break the crabs so that they can get into the meat inside um, the green sea turtles, on the other hand, if you look at them, their face is very flat. And the reason their face is very flat is because they like to eat veggies. Uh, they like to eat seagrass and they like to eat algae. And the only way, and that, so if you look at seagrass, it grows from the sand, right? So if you had a beak that was shaped like a hawksbill sea turtle, you'd only be picking at one seagrass at a time. Green sea turtles, like teacher Rushan, likes to put as much food as they can in their mouth. So the only way they're able to do that is if they have a very flat face, they can press their face really close onto the grass, and they can fit as much seagrass into their gob as they possibly can. So these are just some so these are just some examples of what sea of what different sea turtles eat. Leatherback sea turtles very famously eat jellyfish they spend all their time out in the deep ocean and they can dive dive super 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 deep to try to get as all the little jellyfish that swim deep 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 into deep in the ocean all the other sea turtles eat a mix of different types have a different types of diet so they eat crustaceans they eat soft body things like sea cucumbers and etc but i just wanted to highlight these few specialist sea turtles because I think that their body shape is very important to how they're able to eat their food. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Teacher Rushan. Well done. <laughs> okay. So, okay, this, uh, this next question is uh, pretty popular. I think of all the questions that we receive, um, three, three children ask the same question. Question number 20. Question number 20 is asked by Alexand Alexander Sadik. He asks, why do, see why do turtles have different colors? Teacher Olivia, would you like to answer this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for the questions. And um, just now, teacher Rushan did a very good job telling us all these sea turtles, they, uh, they, uh, they eat a lot of different things. So green turtle, they, they like to eat veggies, they like to eat sea grasses. So teacher Rushan, can you show us a picture of green sea turtle? Look, let's look at their color. There you go. So you see this green turtle, can you tell me, does it look green? Not at all, right? It's not like ninja turtle. They don't look green at all from their, uh, from their shell, from their body, from their faces. Doesn't look green at all. But why is it called green turtle? It's actually it named after the, the tissue, the fat tissue in their body, which is greenish color. So this green color actually uh, is also from their diet. They eat a lot of veggies, so it makes their fatty tissue become greenish color. So that is why they named green turtle. Okay, uh, what, uh, and then the other turtles, like, uh, for example, the leatherback turtle, why is it um, because they're black, fully black with white spot on their body? So why do they look at, uh, look like that? Um, anybody can help me? Actually, I didn't know. <laughs> this is tough. I, I need to go back to school. <laughs> Because uh, I, I don't know how to answer this question, so I am going back to school to to uh, to learn about turtles. Oh wait, wait. Let, let me ask teacher Rushan. Or teach, maybe teacher uh -huh. Selling can help. Mm -mm. Teacher Selling. Uh, I, I can't. I can't. I well. I don't really have an answer for leatherback. Why do they look all black and white? But I do know that um, green turtles when they are babies. They're actually kind of grayish black at the top and white at the belly, like bottom. And that actually helps them to camouflage themselves from predators when they actually swim out in the ocean. Yeah. 
So imagine mm -hmm. them swimming at the top of the surface, like at uh, in the ocean. Uh, the black color of the back uh, shell will actually camouflage them from like eagles or birds, whereas the white uh, color would uh, at the belly would camouflage them from fishes uh, at the bottom of the sea. So it's also a camouflage strategy. Right. If I can add to uh, teacher Sally, um, mm -hmm. even our Asian brown tortoise, they look really brown. So they live in the um, the hills. Uh, so uh, they actually, if if you can actually see them uh, in wild, you can't really spot them. So it it is like you said, a part of camouflage. Mm. That's really true. Yeah. Right. So now, um, Alexander, you got your answers. So you don't have to go you know, do research anymore. Our teachers have answered your questions. <laughs> Moving on to question 21. We have a question from Ilham Arjuna. Ilham Arjuna wants to know, are tortoises and turtles from the same family? Uh, Teacher Rusha, it looks like you are ready to take this question. Oh, I've been ready since two weeks ago. <laughs> Because I just happened to read this two weeks ago and uh -huh. I decided to, and it just so happened that I was ready to answer this question. So turtles and tortoises, um, the scientific word that they fall under is called chelonids. So these are basically any reptile that has a shell. In normal language that, pe that people who are not scientists would use, it's perfectly fine to use the word turtle to describe tortoises sea turtles and turtles as well as terrapins uh, but yes they are all of the same family if you want to impress your parents you can say they are all part of the chelonid family or you or if you cannot remember the name you can just say oh they're all turtles but there are different names for each one turtle tortoise and terrapin does that answer your question i hope it does I, I think it does because um, we get this question a lot, um, maybe because of the, uh, the language. So in English, we call tortoises, we call them as turtles. Uh, sea turtles, they are also turtles. Uh, freshwater turtles or uh, soft shell turtles, uh, they are also turtles. But um, let's, let's do some of these terms in Malay. Sea turtles are called penyu in Malay, right? And then we have freshwater turtles, the ones that we work with, uh, we call them the tuntung. And then we have tortoises, we call them the kura kura. And then we have the soft shell turtles, we call them the labi labi. The brown tortoises that teacher Alia just mentioned, we call them the baning. Okay, it's very confusing. We have all these different names. And when we go to kampongs or villages to, to talk with the local pachi machi, the uncles and the aunties, they use different names. <laughs> so uh, we may have more names than we know of, but uh, generally uh, they are from the same family. And uh, a general term that we use to describe these turtles with a shell is that we call them turtles. Mm -hmm. okay, Thank you for that, yeah. uh, Pelf. All the other teachers <laughs> yeah. know that teacher Rushan's Malay is horrible. <laughs> so any Malay lesson that I could get is, is great. <laughs> You're most welcome. Okay, then we move on to question 22. Question 22 is asked by Rian. Rian, why are there so many types of turtles? Mm. Teacher Roshan, would you like to answer this? Oh, I would love to answer this because I have a fantastic analogy for this that my friend told me <laughs> told me to use, and uh, I thought this was perfect. So let's 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 imagine that you go to a shopping mall. So you go to a shopping mall and you see um, someone at the shop, say a clothes shop, and she's trying to sell you clothes. And then you go to a bakery and you see a baker and he's baking bread and baking cakes and then you go to a restaurant and you see someone a chef and he's cooking noodles or kuei tiao or nasi goreng and then you have the security guard who basically keeps everyone safe so if you look at the mall all these people have different roles inside the mall they fulfill different roles inside the mall now if we look at turtles and try to imagine them as people in the malls, each turtle has a different function within the ecosystem. So they fulfill different roles. So when one species of sea turtle is able to fulfill one role, 
they become they are one separate species and then another sea tur another turtle is able to fulfill a different role so they become another species so just just with sea turtles because i know them the best um green sea turtles they're they fulfill the role of maintaining the health of seagrass meadows and they do that by eating a lot of very fast growing seagrass and they give other seagrass species a chance to be able to grow. So you get seagrass meadows that have a lot of different seagrass species. Uh, hawksbill sea turtles, their role is to keep the coral reefs healthy. Why? Because they eat sponges. Sponges grow very, very fast. So if there were no hawksbill sea turtles eating the sponges, you would get coral reefs that weren't really coral reefs, but they'd just be sponge reefs. So the reason we have such beautiful reefs is because hawksbill sea turtles come in and they eat all the sponges. So that's why we have a lot of different species of sea turtles. They're fulfilling different roles within our ecosystem. Does that answer your question? Oh, does Livia have a question now? <laughs> oh, maybe teacher Livia has another answer. Like, because you, you took oh, us to okay, the mall, right. so she may want to take us somewhere else, so. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> take me anywhere. This okay, right. Is killing me. Okay. Uh, right now, from mall, we move to pasta. No la, kidding, kidding. Uh, look, uh, what about river terrapin? So I learned this from teacher Alia and teacher Pal. River terrapins, they don't have sea grass or, or sponges or jellyfish to eat in the river. So what they did, what they do in the river uh, is because this river terrapin, they eat carcasses. The dead fish, la, they, uh, the, the other things that is uh, that and they will try to clean the river. So with the river therapy, we will have a very uh, clean river. Am I right, Teacher Alia? Yeah, you're almost yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so that, that answers uh, uh, Ray Ann's questions that uh, we have these many types of turtles because they all uh, do different things to the environment. So that's why we have so many types of uh, turtles. Okay. Are we doing good so far? Uh, are my teachers uh, having fun so far? Yeah. Right, okay, we have a lot of yeah, questions coming in uh, from YouTube. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, we have another half an hour to go. We'll try to run through this quickly so that we address everybody's questions. Question number three, oh, this is going to be in uh, Chinese. Um, this is submitted by Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly, Kimberly, Tamanyan 来长大就是变成一个成年鬼就是变成海龟爸爸回来加蛋对所以如果他们变成海龟爸爸和海龟妈妈的时候他们就会回到他们原本出生的大海交配然后妈妈就会上去海岸那边加蛋爸爸就会
mama will go on the beach to lay eggs the, the father will stay in the water yeah so when the mother lay the eggs the eggs will stay in the nest for about 45 to 60 days so after that they, they hatch already they come out from the eggs then they will come out from the nest so when they come out from the nest they will go to the sea so they will stay in the sea they will keep eating like teacher Roshan keep eating until they grow up already 15 to 30 years then they will lay eggs <laughs> You're making me cry. Why do you have a plate in front of you, Rushan? <laughs> oh my. You said teacher Rushan likes to eat. And you just caught me is, after I finished this, breakfast. This is too funny. This is too funny. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's move on to question 24, Kaylin. Are you doing okay, Kaylin? Yes, okay. Question 24 is asked by Wang Yu Sen. Wang Yu Sen asks, why does a turtle have body armor? Teacher Rushan, would you like to add to this? Uh, I was just about to open my cookies, but okay, sure, I can answer this. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to employ the help of another turtle. This is Sammy, the olive oh, green turtle. This is a different one. This is a very small one. This is... Uh, this is Myrtle's sister. Uh, Sammy is a little jealous of uh, Myrtle and the attention that she's been getting. So uh, Sammy, uh, what I want to demonstrate with Sammy that probably wasn't very clear with Myrtle is the defense that all of the sea turtles have. Again, uh, this, was, uh, this was answered before, but I want to answer it again and probably a bit clearer. When a sea turtle is swimming around in the ocean and it comes across a shark, it will turn its shell towards a shark so that the shark would not be able to bite it. So in ecology, we call that a mouth gape limitation. They cannot open their mouths wider than a certain size and they're not able to get their mouth around the sea turtle. If we're talking about a turtle or a terrapin, they will just go straight into their shell. Not unlike Sammy. Are you okay, Sammy? Yeah, okay, Sammy's okay. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. It's basically to protect themselves as armor would do to a human. Okay, Sammy, here you go. Thank you, teacher Rushan. So Thanks, from <laughs> the sea, we are to thank you, Sammy. So from the sea, we are going to take all of you back to the river because our next question, uh, Nur Ainil Safiatu, she wants to know how old would a terrapin be uh, when she first lay her eggs? So uh, well, like, like teacher Olivia mentioned just now, this, all these turtles, hatchlings, babies, they hatch from the nest and then they go into the sea, they go into the river. So in the river, they will be in the sea, they will be eating, eating, eating to grow up. So that's why we eat everything our mothers give us, remember? Right. So and uh, at which age do they come back to lay eggs? So can we get teacher Alia to take this question? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ainil. That's a very good question. Okay, um, just like um, teacher Livia has mentioned before, um, similar to uh, marine turtles, sea turtles, river terrapins also reaches sexual maturity at the age of 20 years and above, which means they have to eat and keep eating until they grow up to the age of 20 years old. They can, the females can start to reproduce eggs and the males can start to reproduce sperm. And both of these... Um, sexes are ready to mate and make babies so um similar to like i said just now similar to um see marine turtles they are also um social species and tortoises who also sexually matures more than 20 years old so that's a very long time mm -hmm. i hope that answers your question Ainil. Right. So generally, if I, I read correctly, uh, well, I need my teachers to let me know if I have done this correctly. I read mm -hmm. somewhere that um, our, turtles, uh, our turtles in Malaysia, at least, well, sea turtles and the freshwater turtles, they take a long time before they can uh, grow up to become fathers and mothers. Is that true for all species? Uh, does this apply to sea turtles as well? Do they take 15, 18, and 20 years as well to to grow up before they can come back to lay eggs? Yes? Yes, they take oh, my, my teachers are all time. nodding, so they don't yes. want to say anything. <laughs> no, no, they, 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 do take a, they do take a very long time. Uh, there is a 
table in a book that I'm looking at right now. Uh, I'm looking at the book, not the table. It's sitting on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get the book and leave the, leave the camera. But um, there is a table in there that shows the age at which a lot of sea turtles reach um, maturity. And some of them take up to about 16 years, 20 years, even 30 years. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very, very long time. All right. Thank you, teachers. Moving on to question 26. So um, let's let we have uh, 30 questions. We have collected 30 questions from uh, the, the children. And when we are done with these 30 questions, we will address your questions in the YouTube chat box. So if you're still watching this and if you have questions that you want to ask our teachers, type your questions in the chat box. OK, so moving on, we have question 26. Question 26 is asked by Nidhao Suazan. Sorry. Excuse <laughs> me. Can, Bless you. Can a turtle remember the person who who released it into the sea? Teacher Livia, would you would you like to ask the question? <laughs> Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Kelly. This question, uh, I would say it's a very sweet question. I When I see that, I was like, oh, you, you wanted your, you know, we also hope that sea turtle will remember us, especially for me. Uh, uh, I have released a lot of baby turtles. I hopefully they all remember me, but sadly, <laughs> they actually don't. They don't uh, really know who, who are we releasing them. They really do not have uh, this memory. Uh, for example, actually, uh, see that the, uh, they are solitary animal actually it means uh, they live their life by their own all the time almost their entire life so they don't really have family like uh, they won't stick to their mother and father because they don't even see their father and mother in the ocean they never see them before and when they emerge from the sand they go to the sea they are with their sleepings actually. So all of them, this tiny uh, baby brother, they are moving towards the ocean and swim away. They have siblings, but they actually won't live together with the siblings. They will spread out to, in the ocean, you know? So that is the nature behavior of a sea turtle. They will be alone. Very sad, right? But, <laughs> but sea turtle will have a, a interaction somehow. For example, the mother and the father, they will have to mate so that they make babies. Uh, maybe when they're feeding at the sea grasses, they see another turtle. Maybe they will look, they were curious, oh, there's someone look like me over there. But they would not talk to each other, of course. So there is, uh, is, there is why the sea turtle don't meant to remember a person like us or even their own family. Yeah, that's my answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Livia. No, that, that's good to know because um, we don't really want sea turtles to remember human beings, right? If I have released a sea turtle into the sea or, you know, release uh, all these terrapins into the river, I don't want them to remember me. I want them to remember what is dangerous for them. So human, we are not friends of sea turtles. We, we like them, we love them, but they are not supposed to be our friends. They, they are supposed to be... Uh, I don't know, scared, terrified. They're supposed to stay away from human beings. That's how they can survive. So if they become friends with us, that's when it gets dangerous, right? So, for example, in the if you go to an island, you go snorkeling, you see a sea turtle, and if she comes near you, then she treats you as a friend, and then you feed her. So that's not the natural behavior of a sea turtle. So the way I see it is... Uh, yeah, it's better they don't remember us. What is more important is that we remember the turtles, right? Okay, so this, um, well, teacher Rusha wanted to eat some cookies, so we'll let him do that. Yeah, you go ahead and eat your cookies. So this next question, um, let's ask teacher Selling. So are turtles herbivores or carnivores? Herbivores meaning uh, animals that eat only uh, plant material. Carnivores are like tigers, they eat only meat material. So let's get teacher Selling to answer this question. Hi, Aranya Harris. Thanks for the question. So there are actually many different species of sea turtles. And of course, they all have their favorite uh, food or they have their preferred diet, what they like to eat. And there are turtles that are herbivores where they only eat vegetables. Uh, like green turtles, they eat sea grasses. And of course, there are turtles that are uh, carnivores as well. And a lot of turtles are omnivores, means that they like to eat vegetables as well as uh, meat, like crabs or crustaceans. 
So um, a lot of turtles, uh, sea turtles, sometimes their diet change as they grow older. So they might like different food when they're younger and they may change to a different favorite food when they're older. Like probably like we like to eat sweets when we're like small, but maybe we like to eat pasta when we're bigger. So um, sea turtles could be herbivores, carnivores or omnivores. I'm not so sure about freshwater turtles. Maybe uh, Teacher Alia or Teacher Pao can answer that. Ah, okay. Um, so for river therapies, the juveniles are omnivorous. Like Teacher Livia said, they do feed on carcasses that is on the bottom of the river, while the adults are mainly herbivorous. So they like to eat these uh, mangrove apples. When, and then when they swim, 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 and then they poop, <laughs> that's when they actually uh, also poop out seeds. Hmm. So yes, they are um, both um, omnivorous and um, herbivorous when they are adults. Right, I guess that's the same with all of us as well. Another public service announcement. When we are little, younger, we should eat a mix of everything. You should eat, uh, you should eat meat, you should eat protein, you should eat your vegetables, right? If you decide to be a vegetarian when you're grown up, that's okay. But growing up, you need the proteins to, to grow up, to grow taller, right? So you, you need a lot of nutrients, different nutrients in your body. So I guess that's the way it works with turtles as well. Uh, they're probably herbi or omnivorous when they are small, younger. They eat a lot and absorb a lot of nutrients. And then as they become adults, uh, river terrapins, green turtles, they switch to a completely plant-based diet. And that's okay, right? Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's very okay. Yeah, so a lot of the adult turtles will have specialized diet but when they were younger they tend to eat everything live well and young <laughs> okay question 28 uh, we have uh, two more to go and then we'll address your questions in the youtube chat box uh, question 28 question 28 is asked by jia ho jia ho asks how many kinds of sea turtles are in the world teacher alia would you like to answer this Oh, yes, please. Okay, thank you, Jiaho, for your amazing questions. Right. I've also just learned this um, recently as well. So, Jiaho, we are both learning right now. Okay, so around the world, we have around 349 turtle species out there. Can you imagine? We have almost 400 turtle species out there, and only seven of them are from the marine. They are the sea turtles. So if you minus seven of them, can you guess how many uh, freshwater turtles and tortoises do we have around the world? We have a lot. Yeah, so that's really amazing, yeah? So I hope that answers your question, Jiaho. Yes, we do have a lot of turtles in the world and uh, we need more people to study them and uh, protect them like, like ourselves. So if any of you want to help save turtles when you grow up, not now because right now you should study. <laughs> uh, when you grow up, if you want to be like us, uh, save turtles, uh, call us, email us, visit our website, visit our Facebook and get in touch with us. All right. Okay. Uh, question 29 is from Aiden. Aiden wants to know how can plastic and straws kill turtles because uh, these two things look like they are worlds apart. So how do we go about this? Can we have teacher Rushan? Yeah, sure, since I'm done eating my cookies. Um, uh, so sea turtles, kind of like teacher Rushan, like to eat a lot. And uh, they'll put anything in their mouths, um, especially when they're now, when they're very young, like um, Teacher Sailing and Teacher Alia have mentioned before, they uh, sea turtles will eat anything so that they can grow as big as they can. And some things they don't recognize as their natural food, like plastics, they'll still eat it as well. Um, the thing about plastics, though, is uh, there's no nutrients in plastics. So when you eat it, it just kind of sits in your stomach. You don't get any kind of nutrients. But because you fill your stomach with all these plastics you feel full like you feel like you cannot fit any more food into your gut so, uh, but even though you feel full you're not drawing any nutrients from those plastics so what happens is that 
sea turtles will end up dying because uh, they were not able to get the nutrients that they needed from the foods that they normally eat. And a lot of people kind of, I mean, ever since the video of the sea turtle with the straw hit the interwebs, um, there was a lot of campaigns to for everyone to stop using single-use plastics and stop using single-use straws and stuff like that. Straws is straws is really just part of the problem. The plastics are the bigger problem. And um, so, I mean, just while it's good to reduce the number of straws that you're using, you also need to focus on just reducing the overall number of plastics that you're using so that there's less of a chance that your garbage ends up in the oceans. Right. Well, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, teacher Rushan. That is really your forte. Yeah, okay, so... yeah it's, it's totally my forte. <laughs> right. OK, so we'll take this last question that has been submitted by children. Oh, oh I forgot to mention this earlier, that we had uh, 64 questions from 25 children. So a total of 25 kids uh, through their parents or guardians submitted 64 questions. Some of them are repeated, so we have shortlisted 30 questions to answer. And this is the last question. That, that, <laughs> this question is asked by Naim Osama. He asks, how do turtles go into their shell? Teacher Alia, would you like to answer this? Yes, please. Naim Osama, this is an excellent, excellent question. Okay, so almost all turtles are able to retract their head into their shell except for sea turtles, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, right. So I will share with you my screen so that you can actually um, see what I'm trying to explain to you. Right? Give me a minute. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can. All right, awesome. Right, so this will actually help you understand better. So turtles have two suborders. Some are, are, are pleurodians, which means they are the side neck turtles, and they are more primitive. They are very old, old turtles. And then you have the cryptodirants where they are able to hide their head. So these are the more modern turtles. So Pleurodian. Pleurodian have, right here you can see, Pleurodians, they have three flexible points on their neck. So they, can, they cannot retract their heads into the shell, but they can fold it sideways. While Cryptodirant only has two, so they can fold their neck and pull their head closer to the shell. And these are a few examples of Pleurodians that we can find in the whole world, which is the African dwarf mud turtle. And we have the red belly short neck turtle. And this scary looking guy, the northern neck turtle. And as for Cryptodians, this is an acute flat, uh, Indian flap shell turtle. Okay, so um, I hope that really helps um, answer your questions, Naeem. All right. Thank you, Teacher Alia. So we have 10 minutes to go and we have uh, quite a few questions. Uh, we have very enthusiastic uh, children and, and their parents on YouTube chat box. Yeah. Um, I just want to quickly ask this. Uh, is it okay if we go over time for 10, 15 minutes? I'm actually asking this to our YouTube viewers. If you say, if you think it's okay for us to go over time, uh, to 110 or 115, um, please type yes in the chat box so that I know, so that we all know that you're willing to stay with us. Can we do this until um, 115? Okay, I think, I guess it's the light that takes sec 10 seconds. Yeah, there is a bit of a lag in the... Like a 10 second lag, huh? Yeah. Oh, someone Wait. said yes. Another person said yes. Another third said, oh, it, we have a lot of yeses. All right, okay, so I'm, I'm not seeing it, but uh, a lot of yeses. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Someone right. said bole. Bole, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, so I, I'm gonna get these questions from uh, YouTube. Um, okay, what's what about if we play a game? So I'm gonna read this question, and if you want to answer this question, you shout your own name. Is that okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> oh no, what's my <laughs> name? <laughs> All right, question number one from Sien Yang. Are real sharks a threat to turtles? What? Are real uh, sharks a threat to turtles? I can uh, answer this. Um, Shark. I think, I think did, did they mean sharks or whale sharks? Whale sharks. sharks. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Ethan. Sorry, uh, Lua. Oh. Um, yeah, no, yeah. whale sharks. Uh, whale sharks are, as far as I know, whale sharks are not a threat to sea turtles, uh, simply because uh, whale sharks eat plankton. Um, yeah, so they that that's really all they eat. They're still predators. Uh, plankton are still kind of like little, small, small microscopic animals. But when they see a sea turtle, it's not something that they'll go after straight away. Or ever, if I'm not wrong. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay. Wow. Thank you, Teacher Rushan. Somebody asked this question, which uh, Teacher Livia has already addressed earlier. Is it true that we should not touch the baby turtles when they get back into the sea? Uh, Teacher Livia, do you want to briefly repeat this? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, we shouldn't touch sea turtles. Uh, and I would say any kind of wildlife, even a monkey, even uh, a starfish when you dive, or, or you know, all this wildlife that should be in nature, left untouched. We just hand off and watch and appreciate their presence in the ocean, in the forest or surrounding us. Yes, did you uh, selling? Yeah. Yeah, can I add? Uh, actually, it's similar like COVID-19, but maybe not to that extent. But sometimes we do not know what kind of viruses or bacteria that they have or we have. And by touching them, we might spread that to each other. So it's best uh, just to like observe them from far and let them do what they do. And, you know, we just, yeah, let them live their life. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, well, Jonathan is a concern. Yeah? He said that uh, the current COVID, because we're talking about like COVID-19 pandemic, the current COVID-19 pandemic has greatly uh, reduced uh, human presence uh, and subsequently human threat to turtles. This is very technical. Do we have a time frame for the leatherback turtles to recover enough to be uh, taken off the critically endangered list? Um, okay, I yeah. will try that. Um, it's an interesting uh, question because we have seen news that, for instance, uh, we have uh, nesting in Park Dixon and we have leatherback nesting uh, in Phuket, Thailand. So we see turtles coming back because there are less human presence on beaches. But uh, we are not so sure about our leatherback turtles in Trungano because even before uh mco we have not had nesting for many years and the last nesting was 2017 and we only have one nest so we are not sure if we still have our leatherback population out there and is it because that there are human presence on the beach that that's the reason why they don't come back and they should come back when there are no human presence but if we don't actually have the leatherback population out there anymore it doesn't matter whether there are human uh, presence on the beach or not because there's just none to come back to right yes uh, well that that is something that has uh, happened a long time ago one of, in one of the sessions yesterday we talked about how the leatherback turtles used to come back to lay it will come to Rantau Abang in Trungganu to lay eggs by the thousands and due to many factors not just one particular factor due to many factors um, uh, we don't see them now so they are, in fact, they are now listed as critically endangered. And, and I don't think it's going to bounce back. It's going to take a lot of effort, you know, for, for, for any turtle to be able to do that, which I don't think is possible. But what is more important is that whatever other turtles that we have, we still have today, now, these are the ones that we should work to save, right? So um, it probably is not nice for me to say uh, the leatherback cannot be saved. Uh, I'm not, I shouldn't say that. But uh, 
we still have a lot of green turtles in our seas, in the ocean. We have a lot of uh, hawksbill turtles that come up to Malaysia to lay eggs. So if you're watching this, there is something that you can do to help save our own turtles. That something that can be done, for example, don't buy turtle eggs from the market, right? Yeah. Okay, then we move on to the next question, right? And freshwater turtles too. <laughs> right, and freshwater turtles. Okay, so uh, we move on to the next question. Um, why do leatherback turtles have so many teeth? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, um, can, I, can I have a try on this? Yes. Okay, so the special thing about leatherback turtles is that they have all these spikes actually that runs from the lining of the mouth all the way down to the stomach. Yeah, so these spikes, they are actually pointed inwards. So leatherback are known to um, eat jellyfish. That's their favorite food, right? So when they eat a lot of jellyfish, they sort of like suck them out into their stomach and, and they need to excrete the excess water out from the tummy, right? So this is where the spike actually comes in. They actually help to hold the uh, jellyfish that is already in the stomach while the leather bag excrete excess water out or while the leather bag consuming more jellyfish. Okay, so those are actually spikes, not teeth. But, uh, and the function is to make sure that the food that goes into the leather bag turtle's mouth remains in the mouth. Because otherwise, you eat and everything comes out, then you don't absorb any nutrients, right? Mm -hmm, so right. that is the function of these spikes in the leatherback turtle's mouth. Okay, moving on. We have this. A question for uh, Dr. Rushan. What are the sand and vegetation characters influencing the nesting of olive ridley turtles? <laughs> Somebody knows that you were working with olive ridley turtles. Uh, oh, is this a not yeah. a good time to answer this question? Yeah, no, no, no. You got no, a no, headache it's already? It's just, yeah, no. Uh, I have worked on uh, this. This kind of topic is called um, uh, "What are the sand and vegetation characteristics in flowing nesting of olive ridley?" Okay, so I have worked on nest site selection by flatback sea turtles in Australia. Um, I've worked uh, a little bit on olive ridley turtles in the Maldives, uh, but back then I was a vet nurse and I was basically rehabilitating turtles. I didn't work on nest site selection for all of Ridley's. Uh, but just just from what I remember from the literature uh, is that the all of Ridley sea turtles require sand that is above the high tide line. So when the tide is high, they want to nest above that because what happens is if the tide were to go over the nest, uh, all the eggs would die because they essentially drown. Um, it needs to be just a little bit moist, not too dry, because as a sea turtle is digging, if it's too dry, the nest just collapses in on itself. And uh, as far as I know, um, as far as I know, uh -huh, all of Ridley turtles are not keen on digging uh, nests in vegetation, so they prefer if there was no vegetation uh, in that area. So um, I hope that answers your question, uh, Wa. Kaylin, this is a question for you to ask. Our next question. You know, kids like to talk about superheroes, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want to read this question? Okay, sure. Z this is from Zen T. I am a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There are many other superhero turtles. Are there any other superhero turtles out there? Any of you can answer, I don't mind. <laughs> I'm surprised that kids these days know about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because I sort of grew up with them. So, are you guys kids or not? <laughs> are they, do, do we, uh, all of us, do we know any other superhero turtles out there? Well, I know of uh, cartoon uh, characters, turtle cartoon characters. Uh, well, they're not exactly superhero. How many of you have watched uh, Finding Nemo? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right, and this and this turtle got um who who got flushed? The turtle got flushed in the toilet bowl? Or was it the turtle got flushed in the toilet bowl? No. It was, it was Nemo. Nemo. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then there's another I don't cartoon think there was called any flushing. 
<laughs> okay, and then there, I think there is this another cartoon called Sammy. Sammy's Adventures or something like that. Right? I think it's based on the sea turtles. Uh. But they, they're not exactly superheroes, right? No. Yeah, not, not that we know of. Uh. Yeah. Okay. But so all here. Those are superheroes. Yes, also. Yeah, <laughs> all right, sounds good. All turtles are superheroes. This next question is from Karev. Karev wants to know can sea turtles keep their hands and legs in their shell? Can turtles keep their limbs in the shell? We, I think we addressed this question earlier, but let's do a recap. Mm. Um, um, teacher, Alan, you want to answer? Oh, sorry. Uh, teacher Rushan is ready. Okay. He's holding okay. his uh, Myrtle turtle. <laughs> so, Hi, can see, I'm, yeah, Myrtle says hello. Sammy, don't worry. I'll get back to you later, okay? Okay. You all can't hear it. She's very cross. Myrtle the turtle... Uh, again, as I mentioned before, turtles are quite flat, so there's no space for them to bring their limbs into their shell, unlike my plushie here. So no, Karev, uh, sea turtles can't get their hands and legs back into their shell. They just keep it flapping out like that. Okay? You okay, Myrtle? Can I, can I add on for that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, like Teacher Rushan showed, uh, you know, they they cannot go back to their shell, but actually baby turtle, they can fold their flippers at their tummy when they sleep or when they're floating. I have seen this photo, uh, photo before, they fold it at the tummy here and then, you know, just floating like that. Another way would be uh, they uh, they use their flipper and then they're like this. I have seen this before, huh? like, like they just put it like back, you know. On the back shell. Yeah, 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 like that, something like that. So uh, I do not know why they do that, but then if they are not swimming, they, they somehow they can do that. Yeah. I, think right, part I, I of have the seen that they, too. I think a part of the reason they do that is, um, particularly with hawksbills, is because I think they look like a leaf, so predators can't... Uh, camouflage. Can't, yeah, it's just just maybe like a full body camouflage, like mimicry, basically. That's mm. from what I from what I understand. Uh, when I was in the Maldives, we used to have uh, baby hawks. We used to have baby hawksbills like that. And that's what they used to do as well. Just kind of lay really still and hope no one sees them. And, and maybe that's a way to conserve energy. I don't know, because when you're not, uh, well, kids are different these days, kind of because they, are, they have batteries installed in them. But uh, turtles <laughs> don't. <laughs> Turtles don't have batteries in them, so maybe when they are uh, not not doing much, so that's their way of uh, chilling, just mm. to uh, not not expend so much energy and just you know fold their limbs back, their flippers back on the shell and just rest. Mm. Then that could be. It. We should all go back to school and learn about this. <laughs> go and go uh, and just, study this. Uh, just just want to say, uh, someone on the chat has mentioned a sea a turtle superhero which was Master Ugwe in Kung Fu Panda. I completely oh, forgot right. about that. Oh, right. See, yeah, see. Completely see? missed it. Yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely true. So we Master don't watch Ugwe. enough cartoons. So let's see. Yeah, let's, let's do like a uh, I don't know, show, watch well, party speak someday. Well, for yourself, Felf. I watch a lot of cartoons. But oh, I really? Just don't I have no I don't time for them. cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember them. Okay, okay. Okay, we have a question from a four-year-old. Four-year-old oh, CE asks, um, well, because all that she has in her mind is play, right? So then she kids want to know, do turtles play? Do turtles play? Do they socialize with each other? Um, not that I know of. I know that turtles are solitary animals. They prefer to be alone. They're the very um very independent, but they do um they do communicate with each other only when they need to. So they right now they are practicing uh, social distancing, which we are <laughs> doing as well. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they well, uh, I I guess yeah. Roshan, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to step in and say um when we were taking care of the, when I was back in the Maldives and I used to take care of the sea turtles. We used to um. um do this thing called enrichment for um, for uh, our captive sea turtles, and that's basically just to try to keep them entertained as much as we can. Uh, so what we used to do is we used to give them bits of coral um, with their food inside, so that they can go around and try to get into it. 
Uh, from, if I remember correctly, some of our turtle patients with the Olive Ridley project used to put buckets uh, in the tanks so that the turtles can go inside and hide. And there is this really cute, really adorable photo of uh, one of our patients. Um, maybe Claire from the previous um, video can remind me um, that the, we had put a bucket inside one of the tanks and the turtle just put its head inside the bucket and thought it was hiding. So it just stayed really still inside the bucket. And uh, I don't know if the turtle was having fun, but we thought it was quite funny. <laughs> so. It's always fun when the joke is on another person. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I guess that's the sense of security the, the bucket gave that particular patient of yours. So when yes. we raise um, freshwater turtles, the river terrapins in a pond in the kampong, uh, we find that they like to go to the corners. And I, I think that's a security. And we put a driftwood into the, the pond and a driftwood floats. And uh, a lot of uh, terrapins, they like to hide underneath the driftwood. So I guess they feel safer when they are underneath the, the, the driftwood rather than being exposed like that to the elements. So, yeah, okay, we have gone off track with uh, CE's questions of whether turtles play. <laughs> uh, Adeline asks... Um, which is the slowest turtle in the world? Ooh, slowest turtle. Anybody wants to take this? Um, well, I think generally tortoises are, are slow moving, for example, uh, because they walk slowly on the ground, right? <laughs> I would well, say maybe the Galapagos tortoises. Galapagos tortoises? They're so huge and they're so heavy. So heavy, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think for their size, they might be the slowest. But if there are other um, more knowledgeable turtle biologists out there, please uh, <laughs> say it now in the chat and correct me. Um, I should have. A, I should come with a disclosure. Not everything I say might be right. So <laughs> it's just a guess. Just a guess. Well, yeah, because you know what? We don't know everything. Mm, the next question yes. is uh, from Harsha. What is the average length of the life of a turtle? Or how long do they live uh, on average? I get asked this question a lot, so I'm going to pick your brains. I'm going to let you answer it so I can use your answers when somebody asks me this. So uh, there was, so everyone kind of knows Darwin. Uh, right, he mm -hmm. was the one that wrote um, The Origin of Species, and he was the one that went to the Galapagos Islands, and he that's where he came up with his theory of evolution. So uh, he took back, if I'm not wrong, he took back one Galapagos sea turtle, Galapagos land tortoise, Tordis. Galapagos mm -hmm. tortoise, and uh, it lived, and it only died very recently, mm -hmm. I think, recently was... as in like the last 10 years. Right, he so, was, I don't know, 176 years old or something like that. Centuries century yeah old like so they so they can live for up to a century right but what on average what do you think that on could average. be the oldest yeah that could be the oldest uh, living turtle that recently died but what do you think on average how long do they live uh, like just give a ballpark figure uh 40 years 60 80 years I'll let someone I, would, else answer. I would i don't have like the the exact answer, but I would give it a guess, 80 years. Yeah, so we, you know, um, Harsha, we don't have these answers because uh, I don't think any of us uh, have experience uh, following, tracking these turtles for that long. So that's why we don't have a definitive answer for you. But uh, if we all have to take a guess, we would say between 60 and 80 years. That is if they are not exposed to the threats in the sea or in the river. Because you know what happens in the sea? You have ghost nets, you know, nets that are floating in the sea. Turtles get trapped in these nets and then they drown. Uh, same things in the river. Uh, fishing gears that are used by fishermen in the river, they, they continue to catch. Uh, well, turtles get caught in this fishing gear. So, yeah, if, if they um, survive all these threats, they may be able to live up to 60, 80 years old. Okay. Okay, this next one, also from Harsha, is a uh, technical, <laughs> well, should I say technical? A legal, a legal question. So Harsha is concerned that uh, sea turtle eggs are being sold online and how is this legal? Uh, anybody wants to take this question? Can I? 
Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I will. I will share a little bit and maybe help me with this as well. Because uh, I wanted to zoom it to Malaysia and specifically in Terengganu. So uh, in Malaysia, we have a different uh, legislation. So uh, in Terengganu, it is legal to sell uh, green tea. Oh, sorry, uh, we cannot sell letter bag turtle eggs. Other species turtle eggs it is legal to be sold in the market. And in Terengganu, the most abundant species that we have is green turtle. So we normally, and it's very common to see uh, green sea turtle egg being sold in the market. And it's because of this pandemic and the, you know, the movement control in Malaysia right now. So the, the seller or even uh, ourselves, I mean, like the people that who want to buy eggs that can't go to the market anymore. So that's why it have another new market emerge, which is uh, selling online. So this is a, a very recent news as well. It's like a uh, last two weeks. And uh, it's actually shocked us, uh, uh, the turtle eggs being sold in online openly in Shopee. And uh, when we found out that we actually report the the, 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 the seller, seller that, yeah, to saying that this is an uh, endangered species, it should be protected, it shouldn't be sold openly at the online platform. And what impressed us the most is actually the decision of Shopee. They make it very clear. They came up with a uh, official statement saying that they are not tolerate. We uh, they are not tolerating with this uh, online market of selling turtle eggs. They are very firm with protecting wildlife. So they actually encourage all of us, uh, public, the general public, to report if we see any uh, unusual traits on the market. It's like why you suddenly see someone selling uh, about uh, what pangolin. Uh, pangolin things on on Shopee or not only see that there's any kind of wildlife that you wouldn't eat it daily life but it's appeared on Shopee or any kind of online platform and people selling for consumption yeah so that's uh, uh that's my uh my two cents uh selling do you want to add on for that uh yeah so what teacher Lydia said correct because of different state legislation in Malaysia every state has different regulations and laws to regulate uh sea turtles and in Tunganu, uh, it is still legal to consume or buy or sell green uh, turtle eggs. So which is why you see the eggs there. And we hope that uh, the state will work towards uh, banning the sale of other sea turtle species as well. Because um, uh, otherwise, it will all, like people can actually still sell or still consume. So we need also like... Um, legal enforce, uh, enforcement as well to make this happen. And of course, as as normal like people, like public, even without a law, without an existing law, we can always take a part to do something about it, like choose not to eat total eggs, or if you see them being sold online, you can always report to the platform. There are things that we can do until we actually have the legal, like, assisting uh i mean legal in place legislation mm -hmm. yeah well, well teacher selling already jumped to the next question although she hasn't seen it yet so i don't know how that happened <laughs> the next question from torrance is uh what can this if i'm not mistaken is i don't know a 10 11 or 12 year old boy what can we do to protect turtles i saw there are many turtle eggs in pasar payang so he's in kuala Trunganu. my great grandma told me turtle eggs is good for health so what can we do to protect turtles Ah, okay. Um, I want to give a try on this. Uh -huh. uh, um, bottom living animals, especially in the ocean, um, they actually accumulate a lot of these heavy metals in uh, heavy metal content in their body because they feed on the bottom of the sea. And we all, we all, we all know. Uh, uh, if you buy coffee, you don't really drink at the bottom of the uh, until uh, at the bottom. Uh, what am I trying to say? Oh my gosh. So sorry. Right. Well, the question is, what can we do to protect the dose? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. So, basically, um, they accumulate a lot of heavy metals in their body. And it's not affecting them. But, however, when we... It, it will be transferred to the eggs. So, when we eat the eggs, we actually... Um, we, we are actually eating some of the heavy metals as well in our body. So, it's the same thing with shark fin. So sharks do eat um, very weak um, and carcasses, uh, weak fish and carcasses 
So they also accumulate a lot of these heavy metals in their body. So basically, sea turtle eggs are not, are not that healthy and it's not even scientifically proven to actually improve your health. Um, same goes with uh, our coffee. Um, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. This this is a good uh, question to uh, to wrap up this session. So uh, let's all tell our viewers on YouTube and uh, anybody watching us now today, what can we do to help save the dogs? Okay, I will I will focus on just one, which is uh to the egg consumption. So as we all know, back in the past, maybe uh you know we are not so rich, so we eat whatever that we have around us. So sea turtle eggs would be like the protein source back then, and we don't have any other options. But now we have a lot of people necessarily have to eat the egg. eggs. You can have chicken eggs, duck eggs. It's, it's a choice. So knowing that sea turtles are actually like you know the population needs our protection to be sustainable. This is something we can do. We can choose another food choice. And the egg, the egg, even though they might have protein or they might have other um, uh, nutrients that are good for health, but we can always choose a better other food source that we can let our turtles survive for a longer period of time. Yes. Yes. All right, uh, teacher Roshan and teacher Livia, uh, do you want to say anything to wrap up this session? What can we do to help save turtles? Uh, Dr. Roshan? Oh, well, okay, first off, I'm not a doctor. Uh, you can call me honorary Roshan, that's fine. Uh, 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 what, can we, what can we do to save sea turtles? Um, there are things that you can do now, and it's just little tiny things in your life. and. I go back and I go back and I'm going to knock on the store quite often um, and I'm going to go back to the thing of plastics. Just reduce the amount of plastics that you use um, because when you take when you take something in a plastic bag or any kind of waste, um, you put it and when you're done with it and you put it in the bin um, and it gets taken elsewhere, just because it's out of sight doesn't mean it's out of mind. Um, it has to go somewhere. And sometimes it does end up in the ocean. Um, what we used what we used to have in the Maldives is uh, the people, uh, the Maldivians, they on their village islands, they'll have this pile of trash on the beaches, and then the we don't have garbage trucks there. We're garbage boats. So when the garbage boats comes, they'll collect all the trash, and then they'll move on. But then when we went back the next day, and there was no, and there was no trash there, we asked, "Where's the trash go?" And they just said, "Oh, the ocean took it." So I mean, so I mean, the I mean, is this is this kind of thing, and you might think that just reducing your plastic is too small to make an impact, but it does. It does make an impact across your lifetime in a week, in a month, in a year. So just reduce the amount of plastics that you have, and you can go a very long way in helping sea turtles. Thank you, Teacher Roshan. Kaylin, do you want to say anything? Uh, no. How do we save turtles? No. Teacher Livia. Okay. Uh... I would say, uh, other than reduce the plastic amount in our daily life, uh, not eating sea turtle eggs, all these things are very important as well. And also, like uh, Teacher Ali also mentioned, that it's not good our good for our health too if we consume turtle eggs or turtle meat. So uh, another thing I would like to uh, ask everybody to do is to spread your love of sea turtles to the others. You tell people about sea turtles, how cute they are, and how uh, our daily life actually can affect their life in the ocean, even though they're so far away, we don't even see them in our life, but we, our practices, our habit can affect them in the ocean. So you always tell this message uh, uh, to the people surrounding you, not only you, but all of us, we, if we do it together, then the, the impact will be really big. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that wraps up today's session. Uh, we have gone 18 minutes uh, over time. Thank you for staying with us. And I'm sorry we couldn't take all the questions in the YouTube chat box, but, but I encourage my teachers to come back to the chat box to uh, directly address these questions. And uh, well, thank you again for spending almost two hours with us. And uh, have a good lunch and uh, see you guys again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye.
拜拜。